The mighty Mississippi looks a little different up north than it does in southern Minnesota. We're going to be exploring the headwaters of this amazing river, starting at Pine Point and heading to Iron Bridge. Let's go, Minnesota. Yeah. Funding for this program is provided in part by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the citizens of Minnesota. All right, here we are, not far from the headwaters of the Mississippi River and also not far from Bemidji, Minnesota, just a few miles out of town, really. It turned into a beautiful day. It was thunderstorming and thick overcast an hour and a half ago and now it's blue skies and puffy clouds and the heat is starting to turn up and uh, yeah I'm pretty excited it's gonna be a good day to be on the water this is where we take out uh, not where we're putting in but we're parking our cars here because we do a shuttle which is always a part of the river trip We're just gonna we're just gonna dash on down and then come up this one and pop right in here. That's it. Yeah, that works. Yep. I should have brought my hey. hand. Hey there. Hey, I'm Brenda. Brenda, Mark. Very Hi. nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Hey, hey Preston. Nice Brenda. to see you. Nice to meet you. Tim. Nice Tim. to meet you. Wait. Okay. Mark, Preston, Tim. Hi, Tori. Tori. My name's Emmy. Hi. Nice to meet you guys. Cool. So you guys are all loaded up. We and are. Uh, we're loaded up. Hey, hey. Wait, I'm sorry, what was your name? Nathan. Nathan. Yeah. Hi. All right, uh, here we go. All right, everybody wave. Oh, this will be there fun. You. How far are we going? I'm just looking at this map. It's We're really just driving about a 10, 12 mile, or we're doing about an eight and a half, nine mile stretch. I noticed Mostly forested. Yeah, this, we're kind of okay. above the, kind of the agricultural land and stuff like that. We're at, kind of in the Mississippi headwaters. Okay. Uh, yeah, how are the bugs going to be out there today? Well, I've heard that there have been some flies biting uh, this time Ew. of year. But right. I try not to think about it too much. Yeah. So what else can we expect to see out there today? Uh, we, we may see some eagles or some osprey up in the trees. Probably it's good to kind turtles. of keep, keep your eyes open. You're going to see a ton of painted turtles. Painted turtles oh, on the logs. Oh, cool. Any snapping turtles? Because I have a fear of snapping turtles. I oh my gosh. You just don't see them. I know what I want to see. Okay, wait. Right turn. What do you want to see? I want to see a beaver. Okay. Or a black bear. I'm kind of doubting the black bear. We could see a black bear. Go straight. Go straight on the okay, dirt. Right where it's muddy. Yep. Go straight on the dirt. I've done this before. <laughs> it's, it's been a few years, but I, I remember this one. Deal. Look at black squirrel. So what are the river levels like today? Uh, they're not um, high. It's getting a little bit grassier out there. Yeah. So the river will be slow moving, but there's plenty of volume. Okay. So what about the big storm this morning? Does that affect it? Like the, oh, the I don't term? think. Um, Everything up here is everything up here is wetland. So there's this really, it's this sort of a, a, this effect of sort of buffering that rainfall. I noticed there was a pretty narrow path. Yeah, it could be a narrow bridge. channel. Any chances we'll get lost off in the little side shoots? You stay with the main current is the trick. What I like to do is look at the grass as you look down into the current. You can see where that grass is moving and follow kind of the dominant stream, and okay. it'll take you where you want to go. I like that. Yep. Go, cool. go with the flow. Go with the flow. Yeah. Can you point, uh, show me on the map where we're going to go? Yeah. So we went from Bemidji. Uh, we parked ourselves at um, Iron Bridge. Okay. That's where we're parked. Okay. We dashed over to Pine Point, kind of came around, and we're, we're starting here. So we're going to do this little stretch of river, forested. Excellent. Everybody just come bounding out all happy and yeah, excited. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yay. Bounding, that's a good word. Bounding out. Yeah. You know, that's not really my personality. I know. That's why, I'm, that's why I said it. I'm just such a ray of sunshine. 
a, a spit of water if you want to take a water along. I think that's the only thing anyone's ever said about you, Tori. Right. That I'm a ray of sunshine? We're going to find the channel and we're traveling out this way. Wow, where's the river? It's like <laughs> out in this, 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 this big thing here and then we've just got to find that main it's middle channel. It's just like the cattails are going to part. Yep. Yep. As we go, magically. It's like walking through a cornfield. Yeah, it is. That's what it looks like. Well, the, what happens is the river the river kind of will go to the outside of each turn. So it'll put, it'll put more volume as you go around outside. So that's typically where you'll find like the channels that will go to the outside. Because okay. the river is always cutting the channel and depositing you know, stuff sure. as you go. So yeah. it'll, it'll make these little oxbow turns and things. And some of them um, stall out and then it goes that way. But the river is always meandering and wandering here. Okay. So you have to think like... So we're going to go in and then we're going to go that way to the yep, right. Yep, yeah, okay. this is off we, uh, off we go. You just have to think wow, like, think like uh, water. Yeah, we're going to lose each other. Do we? Do you have like any animal calls we can use in case we get lost <laughs> in there? Like any bird calls? Woo, woo. That's what my kids woo, do. Woo. Oh, woo. Oh. What? Can I help you guys in any way here? And down this way. Wow, look at him. Flash lightning. Don't Which one had the GoPro clamp on it, out of curiosity? Here we are at Pike Point. We are going to head on down the Mississippi River and get our adventure started. It kind of became overcast here in about the last 15 minutes, which actually feels pretty good. Better light and a little cooler. Better light and a little cooler. I'm not getting bit, are you? No. No. Okay. No. So the name of the game is we're snooping around for current. Okay. We're looking for where the current lives. You got to think like a river. Think like a river. How does a river think? I got to go down. <laughs> Working my way. That's simple. I like it. I yeah, can I think can like do a that. drop of water. Okay. Oh, look at how pretty you look against all the cattails. Is it sandy? Yeah. I'll help you. Ooh, it's a little cooler than the lake water. I got you from here. Okay. All right. Oh, uh, wait. I'll just bring it to you. I'm going with my kayak. <laughs> Don't take bring it, away. it back. This is a game of chase the kayak down the river. These are nice. They're made for fishing, so they're. Really I, I'm excited to try it. I was actually looking at buying one of yeah, these. Yeah, you might. Uh, so this is a really good chance to just check it out. Good. Okay. You all set? I think we are. Just start snooping for current. <laughs> Let's take the jungle approach. <laughs> Out of the jungle. Here we go, flying by. <laughs> All right, we're on the river, it's official. And uh, this is pretty cool. It's uh, very narrow and uh, rather grassy. So yeah, just figuring out where the river is today, that's gonna be the trick. Be like a water droplet and just go downstream. It's uh, a little challenging to paddle, <laughs> to say the least. This would be the perfect place for a really sweet game of hide and seek on the river. A little Marco Polo, a little kayak Marco Polo. Oh wait, I see the end of the tunnel. <laughs> this is pretty awesome. Isn't this beautiful? Yeah, no, this is pretty cool. <laughs> so we always know there's Whoa. trail ahead if, if uh, we just follow the bent over blades of grass. Right? Okay. Well, actually, the best way is to just follow you. Okay. <laughs> Water droplets stick together. Yeah. It's kind of tricky to paddle through all these tall grasses. Switching around. I don't see a pole. Ah, here's the channel. See that? Oh, how lovely! Not too bright and sunny. I think that's nice. Oh, hey, look at this. All right, here we are. This the way to the headwaters. River headwaters. And this way to the Gulf of Mexico. Yeah, should we go to the Gulf? How long is that going to take? We have people 
I can tell you, we have people every year who come up to do the the entire river. Oh yeah. We've had people um, swim the Mississippi, canoes, kayaks, uh, big rowboat. One guy wanted to bring a like a whitewater raft. If you can imagine, he was a raft guide from the Colorado River. You actually had people swim the whole thing. Swim it. Yeah, there was a guy. He was in the military, and he showed up with two black like duffel bags, and darn if he didn't swim the entire river. Whoa. Jumped in with a wetsuit and swam. That's I impressive. I'm not really sure I would want to swim through this. Oh, I'll, I'll do it for you right now. Really? Sure. <laughs> Game on. <laughs> Take your mic off first, though. Yeah. <laughs> a, a, what a lot happens to a lot of people is they show up with tons of gear. Tons yeah. of gear. Like they're provisioned for a long trip. And I tell them, well, you're going to have to lighten up your gear because you're going to be walking. Sure. At the upper stretches. And they yeah. just have too much stuff. They got guitars right. and they got like <laughs> buckets full of food. And it's like, you're going to have so much weight that you're not going to be able to well, move. Well, guitars might be important for your yeah. emotional, mental stability on the river. I mean, as soon as you get to Bemidji, it gets, everything gets bigger. Honestly, I love this kind of environment more. It's just, yeah. it's, it's more yeah. fun. It's interesting. It's interesting. It's this the is tight historic, turns. you know, the infant Mississippi River. It's really yeah. amazing. Yeah. And look how clear it is here. That's what I mean by swimming. I think it would be fun. Yeah. Well, aside from all those weeds and bloodsuckers and... Oh, turtles. I think it would be a riot to swim. <laughs> no, actually, it's, it is amazingly clear right here. I don't see any little fishies, though. Oh, I, I uh, boxed you're, uh, you out. Yeah, you're boxing me in. I boxed you out. You boxed me in. That's like a dirty trick in canoe racing right there. Yeah, what the heck? You know all the dirty We're tricks? We're supposed to be on the same team. Lots of cocktails, lots of tall grasses. It's going to be a pretty cool visual from overhead. Beautiful sure from overhead. I've always, I've always wanted an aerial shot of this type of travel. So what, it it kind of stays a lot like this. Like I said, the rain comes and then all this wetland absorbs it and then it sort of discharges it over the season. Yeah. And that's the beauty of wetlands, right? Um, cleans and sort of moderates the water flow. Um, but the grass will grow into the channels more. Hey, hey. It's harder you to find to work a on your steering skills there. Yeah, I'm really kind of like, <laughs> gotta get crowded. What do you have against me here? Yeah, I keep crowding her into the corners. Look at these little things. What are these little flowers? I like these little pink flowers here. So Preston, what kind of art do you do? I'm a printmaker. Okay. Um, I like uh, doing mostly woodcuts okay. um, and uh, some drawings, but a lot of architectural based images like buildings and windows and uh, historic structures. Okay. So why architecture? What draws you to architecture? I've just always enjoyed uh, the man-made structure. Uh, mainly what I do when I'm dealing with those architectural images is show um, man's, you know, the history of the building or the um, uh, weathering of the building and, and the structure. So a lot of civic sculpture pieces out that are out in parks and things. Okay. Uh, so that's what interests me. Do you have any favorite piece that you've worked on? Um, I've got a piece right now that's um, that I'm just finished um, that's called Pentimento. It's a, an image of a ghost sign. I'm doing these ghost signs um, that are old. Uh, painted structures uh, that are, have weathered, and this one is a building in uh, um, in Winona, and okay. it's used. It's made out of 1,600 bricks that are then um, uh, drawn, and the mortars put into them, and then the painting part is on the surface. So wow. when you look at it, it's very dimensional. You really wow. feel. Did you actually do like the detail of I all made, 1,600 yep, bricks in the woodcut? All 1,600 bricks. The bricks are about the size of. Uh, a, a, a chiclet or Whoa. a small piece of uh, uh, gum. That must take you forever. I worked on that piece about a year. Wow. So. Yeah, but, you could only do that for so long each evening. That's true. <laughs> so are you feeling inspired today? Really? Definitely so. Oh, this has been a beautiful uh, paddle. I'm amazed certainly at how quiet it is. Um, whenever you look across at these weeds and cattails and things, it's hard to tell, is that all water? Or is, you know, if you get 10 feet in there, is there some kind of land? And I think as we've run some canoes up into that area, it is water. There's, it's the area up here um, in the northern 
uh, parts of Minnesota are very flat. Okay. So I'm able to see yeah. this kind of thin stream of panoramic weeds and cattails and uh, undergrowth, and then the, the beautiful sky and the clouds that have been uh, changing the whole day while as we've been paint, been uh, paddling. So. Follow the same direction that the grass is laying. That's what they say. That's what Mark says. This part's pretty cool. Yeah, I think we just followed a shorter little turn and now we're back into the main channel. Oh, did we get, actually get off the channel a little bit? Well, it's like there's multiple channels and they take you to the same place. It's like one oxbow will give way to another turn right. sometimes. It'd be really fun to see an overhead Absolutely. aerial and then a little red dotted line of where we actually went. I suppose this is how the Mississippi works, just slightly gets wider and wider Yeah, and wider. it just keeps more... Uh, so at what point does it stop getting wider, I more wonder? More and more tributaries, I think it just, I mean, it's a enormous watershed, so it just keeps taking... It just keeps building and growing? Yep. Until it's like, you know, miles wide and you got barge traffic and right. locks and dams. Can you imagine you know. the things that this river has seen over the years? Yeah, that's why it's so special up here. It's uh, amazing. Wish All the secrets it, it this, holds. Wish more people could see it this way, you know? Right. Well, once Mark is off his phone, I'm just checking then we can chat with him. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you do at the university? I'm in charge of the outdoor program and all the aquatics. So I'm in charge of the lifeguards and swim lessons, sailing instruction, climbing instruction. Uh, we do winter activities like skiing. Um, I teach wilderness first aid and lifeguarding and okay. climbing instructor courses, things like that. Nice. I'll teach a CPR class. Um, All good things. So a, lo a lot of variety okay. and uh, kind of changes with the seasons and I get to work with great young people like, like these three here today. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's so much fun. Yeah, yeah. It's lots of fun. To keep you young at heart. Yeah. We're always playing. Like we got, we're taking out a, a day like this is typical or teaching kids to swim. Mm -hmm. um, it's really rewarding. I really believe in adventure education for people, you know. So are you as much into the winter activities as the summer? Yeah. I'm a skier, a ski patroller and cross country skier. And okay groomer and all that kind of stuff it's um yeah we have great fun up here in the winter okay yeah how would you describe the Bemidji area like how would you describe this area in general the people? oh it's very it's um uh, we love having the access to all these quiet little lakes that people can fish or paddle or swim and people have their little homes and cabins and it's just it's classic kind of vacation country but it's not that busy yeah it's not that much overcooked with uh, tourism yet I mean it's really it's just right yeah. yeah it's, it's wonderful you can paddle like we can spend a day like this and it feels like we're um, on some remote wilderness trip and we're just you know just a short drive from downtown yeah sure I mean we've seen nobody today yeah yeah, yeah. so I appreciate that it's not like lots and lots of developed tourism here it's it's really um, people come up for the woods and the lakes skiing in the winter and fishing one time I was driving down the airport with my son. It was Memorial Day. We're going on our climbing trip. Yeah. And everybody had their boats and trailers, and they're all coming up to, like, visit where we live, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just to get a weekend at the cabin or something. We're right. like, So we enjoy that. <laughs> nice. You don't have to go anywhere. You're right here. Yep. Try to keep it nice for the next generations, you know. I feel like normally when I've been out here, I usually see like red-winged blackbirds or something like clinging to the top of these yeah. little things, and they normally chirp them, but I don't see them. I can kind of hear something over there. Did you know bears mark trees using their teeth and claws as a form of communication with other bears? Let's learn more from Clarissa Schroten at Oxbow Park in Zolman Zoo. We have one type of bear here in the state of Minnesota, and that is the black bear. 
Black bears are found mostly in the northeast part of Minnesota in that coniferous forest that we have in our state. Black bears can sometimes be also different colors. Most of the time they have the black fur with a tan muzzle, but sometimes the rest of their fur can end up being brown, sometimes even a cinnamon color, sometimes even blonde, and there are the very rare white black bears. Now the tips that I'll give you to identify a black bear, their ears are a lot more rounded and very large for their head, and when they walk, you'll notice that their back is straight across where a grizzly bear would have a hump on their shoulders. A black bear has a very straight nose to forehead, whereas a grizzly bear has more of a scoop shape. So a grizzly bear could actually carry around a bowl of Fruit Loops on its nose, whereas a black bear, the nose to forehead is too flat that it would fall off, even though the black bear would be the one more likely to eat the Fruit Loops. I'm Clarissa Schoen from Oxbow Park in Zolman Zoo, and I encourage everyone to get out and enjoy the outdoors. Yeah, we're spoiled rotten. It's beautiful here. Picked up a little headwind. Yeah, now the breeze is blowing around on us. My name is Preston Long. Uh, I'm an artist, a printmaker, and a maker. I'm a professor of art at uh, St. Mary's University here in Minnesota, down in Winona. I was very fortunate to have parents that were supportive of my drawing and coloring and painting and that kind of thing. I did go to college uh, to be an art education major at Appalachian State. I've experimented with a variety of different mediums. Um, as an artist, you always want to try what's going on and see if, if it's a good fit. When I discovered printmaking with several printmaking professors, it was a, a great opportunity to show the process. When you're painting, you might paint six months on a painting and all you see is that final painting. In printmaking, you do uh, uh, a section, you do a proof, you print it, you change it, you erase parts, you add more. So process is the interest to me in printmaking. I love being in Minnesota and using the outdoors. We hike and, and uh, have canoed before, do a lot of bike riding. Um, and this was a great opportunity to be able to go up to the headwaters. I haven't, I've never been in the Bemidji area. The piece that I'm doing now, I wanted to translate as many of those experiences into it as possible. I'm always interested in the, what we see and what's behind the scenes. So this particular image, when you first see it, it's a landscape with a beautiful cloud-filled sky. And the more you really look at it, and it's quiet and it's serene and there's no one there and it's a very peaceful type of thing. When the piece opens, it's a triptych, which is a three panels that work individually or put together. When it opens, it's kind of a shadow box with a lot of different multiple levels of all the people that came together to make this experience happen. It's interesting to see all of those people getting their job done, but they're all basically behind the camera. So when we see something as a beautiful image, we don't think of all the work that goes on behind the scenes. Art has opened up my vision of the world in a number of different ways. I've always been a very visual person, so I'm the one that usually points out a crack in the sidewalk with a, a flower that's coming up or the cloud that's shaped a certain way. My wife and daughter uh, are, I think, more visually attuned uh, because of that, and that's something that I really hope that my students understand and learn and train their eye to see better. So everybody else has kind of gotten ahead of me right here and uh, I'm back here by myself and it's just incredibly serene and peaceful and you can hear the breeze blowing through the cattails and uh, birds chirping around me and the sky is sort of dramatic looking with big open patches of blue sky and some darker looking clouds kind of swirling around and um, it's rather magical.
you made it to the end of the marshy maze. Until next time, let's go, Minnesota. That was fun. Yeah. Oh, ah! oh. Are you okay? So close. Yeah. Almost. Oh, that's good. Yeah. We jinxed it. That's right. Only one. <laughs> Did you get that? Great to experience different parts of Minnesota. Yeah, when I first came up here, I'm from Minneapolis. They were like, hey, like, come see the, the Mississippi. I'm like, it's not the Mississippi. Yeah. This is this is a creek. Yeah, where are the steamboats? You know? <laughs> so we were talking about how quiet it is, but then like the grass is very loud, if that makes sense. Like you can hear how loud the grasses are. All these tall like cattails and stuff running into each other. It's kind of funny because you would never like think of grass as being loud ever. I didn't really have like a like huge appreciation for like country and stuff until I moved to Minnesota and heard a lot more of like the folk music and like that's the music you hear when you're like out in the water, like when you're driving like up the North Shore by all the cliffs and like yeah. the, Lake Superior, and then you hear all of a sudden like, man, a fiddle sounds good, and man, a mandolin sounds real good up here, and you start really loving that like little twang a little bit. I, don't know. I grew up being afraid of like rivers and stuff down south, so like I'm just like hanging out, looking around, just expecting to see like little eyeballs pop out of the water for like gators or something. Funding for this program is provided in part by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the citizens of Minnesota.